Welcome back to the channel. Today, I've got a video admitting my mistake. If you've been watching for a while, you know a few months ago I put some uh, very high quality custom CNC machine spacers, one and a half inch hub centric and lug centric spacers on our LX570 here in the background. And I absolutely love the way that it rides. I love that the wheels and tires are flush to the fenders. I love the look, but there's one thing I just can't stand. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So if you saw in the previous video where I actually installed these spacers, we went from uh, being at the stock uh, offsets for the wheels, factory wheels, where they were tucked in front and back, to a perfectly flush look where they're lined up with, uh, with the fenders. Looks perfect, like it should be like this from the factory. Uh, it actually rides nicer, especially around turns and things. Um, it's not night and day difference, but I actually do notice the difference. The rear has been perfect, flawless, no problems at all. Um, even uh, going through some obstacles, a little bit of light off-roading where the suspension is flexing, no rubbing at all in the rear, it's been great. On the front, if you remember the video where I clearanced the front a little bit for um, the slight rubbing I was getting, uh, I heated up the plastic in front of and in the rear of the tires, I heated up with the heat gun to where it was flexible and moldable um, right before the melting point and was able to get a ton more clearance. I think uh, in some spots about half an inch, in some spots over an inch of clearance in addition to where it was before and was able to make a lot more room for the front tires so that they would not rub and that seemed to help quite a bit. On the passenger side, I have no rubbing at all and it's great there's no problems on the driver's side for some reason i'm not sure why i haven't really been able to figure it out or maybe i really haven't taken the time to figure it out i still get rubbing when i'm on the brakes and turning at the same time say in a parking lot or something on the highway or driving around the city streets it's totally fine um, if i am off-road and going over some obstacles while turning to the left i do get some rubbing um, so what that means to me is that the, uh, this corner of the tire is rubbing somewhere back there. Probably, I would say, maybe six or seven inches inboard from, uh, from the fender. Um, so it's rubbing there somewhere. I don't really have a ton of time right now to mess with it. I have a lot of projects going on. Uh, I've got the 80 series that some of my spare time is going into restoring. We've got uh, a handful of house projects, retiling, flooring, painting, bathroom remodel, etc. that I'm doing myself. So I don't have a lot of time to mess with it. If I did, I think I would leave the spacers on, take the heat gun to the plastic liner on the inside there, and... Um, spend maybe an hour or so and mold that back a little bit further, clearance it some more, and I think at that point it would be good. The other thing I could do, this is riding at stock height right now, since the LX570 is on the AHC suspension and it's hydraulically controlled as far as height, I could adjust the sensors in the front to raise it up just a little bit. I think that would help, I'm not 100% sure, but I honestly kind of like the stock ride height um, it is more comfortable and I've had uh, this LX570 and a previous one we owned at the higher height settings and you can tell when the AHC is pushed that high and the spring uh, the spring rates you're on haven't changed to be um, heavier spring rates you're putting more pressure on your hydraulic system and the ride gets very firm and, and bumpy so I don't want that so I'm not going to raise the height. I'm going to leave it at stock height like it is right now. Um, so my, my easy, quick option right now is to pull the tires and the wheels off, take the spacers off, and deal with it later. I think that's what I'm going to do today. If you've already got your spacers on or have them on order, um, don't be discouraged. They're fine. You just need a little bit of additional clearance, and if you watch my video where I created more clearance with the plastic liners and a heat gun, um, that's really all you need to do, and you'll be okay. The other thing to keep in mind is I'm running larger than the stock tires as well. So these tires are, uh, I think maybe, what is it, inch and a half or so taller than the factory tires. 
Um, so if you're on the factory tires and run these spacers, you more than likely won't have any rubbing at all and won't need to clearance any of the plastic. So that's what I'm doing today. Pulling these spacers off so I can go back to stock and deal with it later. Here we go, I'm on the last tire. Let me show you what uh, I was taking off. I wish I videoed the rest of them so you could see, but essentially, this is the spacer. Very high quality from Bora Off-Road. Um, you can get these from motorsporttech.com. Uh, they are made in the USA, anodized in the USA. The highest quality spacers you can get by far from anywhere. Um, the stuff from China, the quality doesn't even come close. So they're they're hub centric, which means the uh, this lip here is centering on the factory hub, and then this lip here uh, centers on the factory wheels. You always want hub centric fitment for your wheels to your hub, and if you use a spacer, you want to make sure it's hub centric. The other thing that these also are is lug centric, um, meaning that the um, so the factory Toyota lugs, they at least on these wheels, they have a shank, which is this, goes into the hole. They have a shank, and then they also uh, help center the wheel onto what you're bolting onto. In, in the factory case, they go here, so the wheels are lug centric. And what you need with the hub, uh, the uh, spacer, is for it to also be lug centric so that it uh, helps center the lugs in addition to the hub, helps center the spacer as well. And these little acorn style lugs are the ones that go into the holes here and bolt onto the factory studs. So that makes it lug centric. It's lug centric and hub centric. Keep that in mind, no matter what kind of car you're putting spacers on, car, truck, SUV, whatever it might be, you want uh, hub centric and lug centric uh, spacers if you ever do use them and these guys at Motorsport Tech that make the Bora spacers and other spacers All you got to do is tell them what car you're starting with and what wheels you're putting on there Even if they're wheels from a different make and model vehicle and they will make you the very specific spacers to fit The wheel on the outside and the hub you're bolting to on the inside. They are fantastic folks. Definitely give them a call the other thing I wanted to show you guys is these uh, brakes here. So I tow quite a bit. I tow our boat during the warm months. Um, it is a 30 foot cobalt on a triple axle trailer um, loaded up with fuel and everything. I'm probably right around 8,100 to 8,700 pounds, give or take. Uh, I'm at about a 750 pound tongue weight um, by design, getting the boat uh, positioned correctly on the trailer so tongue weight's great um, as far as being able to pull with this LX570 the, the actual weight overall is at the very very high end of what this truck's capable of it pulls it very well I've got tons of power I'm not uh, ever wishing that I had more power or a big diesel or anything like that it does fine we only pull it maybe 30 miles tops, 40 miles at the very most. Typically, to get to the boat ramp, we're at about 15, 20 miles, so it's not that far. The trailer also has uh, electric brakes on two of the three axles, so on four wheels out of six wheels, it's got brakes. Brakes very well, but the factory brakes on this LX570, although they're very capable, uh, I was noticing some brake fade whenever I came to a stop multiple times over and over again in areas where there was traffic or I was going between intersections and red lights. Um, on the factory brakes, there was very noticeable brake fade. First two, maybe three times, braking back to back, it was fine. And then once the brakes heated up, there was a lot of brake fade and I kind of scared the crap out of myself a few times. So I did a ton of research. I went through and looked at a lot of the upgrades that other folks are doing on the Tundra forums, the Forerunner forums, the Ford and Chevy forums, and also wanted to make sure that I went with a brake setup that was um, slotted and drilled, but not from Chinese blanks or any junk blanks that would compromise the strength of the rotor. Uh, I wanted to make sure that I had heavy duty pads that were uh, strong enough to resist brake fade and also wanted to make sure that I had a coated rotor that would not rust and look horribly ugly after a while. As you can see, this one's not rusted. So these have been on here, I think, 
what is it, almost two years, give or take, um, two boating seasons, and they have ha handled uh, the boat very well, uh, all kinds of other stuff, towing, road trips, heavy braking, and while I had the wheels off, every time I do, I always want to make sure to look. There's no lip here on the rotor, there's no lip here yet. As far as the pad wear, I still have tons of pad left, if you can see that. Um, that's the pad right there. So I've, I've got lots of pad remaining still, and uh, it's definitely not time to replace them yet. And I've been very impressed with these so far. I highly, highly recommend them. Uh, I've got another video on the channel of the installation. If you don't know how to change the brakes on this truck and you want to change the brakes just to another set of OEM, or if you want to upgrade to the PowerStop Z36 setup, um, that video is there for you to take a look at and see if it's something that's for you or not. But if you do want to switch out your brakes, even if you're just driving normally and don't tow heavy, I highly recommend the PowerStop Z36, specifically the Z36 brake setup for the LX570, the Tundra, and the Toyota Land Cruiser, the 200 series. Anyway, let's get back to putting this last wheel on. I'll show you where the factory uh, setup sits without the spacers. The difference in the look, it's not a huge difference, but uh, I liked the look with the spacers on. But as I was dealing with the uh, rubbing, I didn't want to mess with it right now, so I'm pulling the spacers off, going back to the factory setup without spacers. Let's get this last one back on. All right, it's all done, back to factory. And this is where the factory setup puts the wheels. You can see it's about an inch and a half in from the fender front and also in the back. See there, it's not flush anymore. Let's take, let's take a look at the other side. Same there. So not a big deal. I still want it at stock height. And it looks fine. It looks like a factory LX570 with slightly larger tires. Which is fine. I'm happy with this. I don't want to deal with the rubbing right now. I'll tackle it again later. If you're interested in those Bora spacers, drop me a line down in the comments below. Um, and I can set something up to where uh, you can buy them at, at a lower price than you would have to pay to Bora or Motorsport Tech and we can work something out. If you're interested in them, drop me a line in the comments and we'll communicate over email. If not, I'll probably keep them in the garage and tackle this again when uh, I have time to mess with clearancing that, that uh, essentially the mud flap on the other side to create maybe another half inch of clearance, which shouldn't be that hard. Anyway, in the meantime, hope you enjoyed the video and it was useful for you. Love you guys, and I'll see you next time.